Executing the Empire's orders, this is your look at the Gentle Giant Star Wars Executioner Trooper 1-6 scale statue. In the First Order, execution duty isn't the domain of a specialized unit, but an assignment that any stormtrooper may draw. Executioner troopers carry powerful laser axes and wear armor with black carbon finish accents. Their serial numbers are never broadcast to squadmates' helmet displays, leaving their identities anonymous. Designed, modeled, and prototyped using top-of-the-line 3D technology, this 1-6 scale statue is hand-cast, hand-painted, and hand-numbered with a limited edition certificate of authenticity. This piece is very limited to only one thousand pieces worldwide. Before we get down to the review of the Executioner Trooper's six-scale statue, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall it actually stands. I'd like to thank the folks as well over at Diamond Select that provided the sample that we're having a look at in this review. It is, again, of a very limited quantity, only 1,000 copies worldwide. So if you'd like to add this one to your collection, you may want to start shopping around now before this guy sells out. Taking the tape measure, I know you probably have seen me jumping back and forth here. I think actually the highest point on the statue is not the helmet of the trooper, but instead the laser axe. So I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. According to the readout, you're looking at the statue of the Executioner Trooper standing 13.8. That's 13.8 inches in height. Now for those that favor their, their statues and collectibles in centimeters, then you're looking at the statue standing 35.2. So it's a little over 35 centimeters in height. To come included with a statue and currently resting against the leg of the Executioner Trooper, he does come included with a trading card. Now, it's not only just a trading card, it's also going to serve the purpose of being a certificate of authenticity, but that's what the front of it looks like. Ironically enough, if you look at the way that the this, this statue is posed on the front of the card, and then you look at the statue when we actually have a look at it, it's facing the opposite way. Well, it's not facing the opposite way, it's definitely facing a different way. Here, it's actually facing more forward. And yet the placement of the pegs only dictates that the statue can only go this way. So it's actually slightly twisted. See right there. I don't know if I actually would have preferred it to be more head-on, as we're seeing here on the front of the card, or if I actually kind of like it slightly more twisted. Again, we'll talk more about that in a second. On the back of the card, however, you get yourself a little read-up that it's the Certificate of Authenticity, of course. Hold on to this as well. You have that Star Wars, the Executioner Trooper, Collector's Gallery, 1 8th scale statue. And then of the very limited release number of 1,000 copies, this one provided again by the folks over at Diamond Select, happens to be 165 of that very limited 1,000 copy release. Out of box, the statue comes with two parts, the main display base here, and of course the trooper that's going to go on top of it. Going back though to the trading card, yes there is a lot of fingerprints. This is something that when you get stands like this, these stands look so good but you will want to take a chamois occasionally and just wipe away those fingerprints. As you can see, I've gotten quite a lot of them already on the surface. But going back to that trading card, though, there is only real one way to put the trooper on top of it. He's got two posts on the bottom of his feet that fit into these holes right here. So again, you can only really put him one way. You can't flip him the other way because, of course, his leg will be hanging off the edge. So there is really only one way, and it's slightly changed from the... The image initially put on the trading card. So I don't know if maybe the trading card had it one way and then they decided later to twist the angle placement of the statue. But one way or another, the statue definitely stands differently than the trading card itself. Anyways, though, flipping up the base, spinning it around so you guys can see, underneath we've got Gentle Giant Limited Star Wars Executioner Trooper Collector's Gallery 1-6 scale statue. Ideal if you are collecting one six scale figures, you can I really put the statue along with it. And then again, you've got that limited run of 1,000 copies. 1,000 copies goes mighty fast. There's been a couple of times that I've wanted to get a statue that had 1,000 copies limited. And getting it, I ended up having to order it online. Anyways, you've got a couple of rubberized feet in the corners there. 
And of course, that will prevent any scratching on surfaces. And that's just the base, of course, not the most exciting of things. But I will say, though, to the credit of Gentle Giant and Diamond Select, I do like the fact that they add this shiny black top to it. Yes, it's a fingerprint to magnets, but it does look really good when you have it on a shelf. Now, spending some much-needed quality time looking at the First Order Executioner Trooper. Boy, did this guy ever turn out great. I have commented in the past, may more so criticize the design of the First Order Stormtroopers, as I felt like the design of their helmets looked like something that was sporting duck bills. I still sort of feel that way. I've never really been a big fan of the First Order Stormtroopers, though I will say, to the credit of the Executioner Trooper, adding the additional carbon finish, that black adding to it, definitely does help to break up a lot of the majority white. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I didn't like the First Order Storm Stormtroopers so much, was they were so heavy white, which obviously was the case with most Stormtroopers anyways, but I think it drew a lot more attention to that duckbill shape in their helmet. You still get that, mind you, with the First Order Executioner, but by adding all the additional black, I, help, I feel like it helps to break up a lot of that additional white. As you can see, it does have the carbon finish accents, primarily here on the shoulders, and of course, that stripe that he has also along the front that runs all the way to the back of the helmet. Let me just spin this around so you guys can see it. Again, maybe adding just that little bit of black helps to break that up where it doesn't look as much, as much, still does, but looks as much like a duck bill on the front. It's got some real wondrous colors and sculpts that they've incorporated to it. All the details done in black to the side. You've got the little slots there on the side done on black. One nice little touch that I, I see they've done is if you look at the actual helmet, specifically the area where the eyes will be looking through, it looks like they've actually done that with two layers. The main darker layer that's a little bit further back on the statue has been painted in black. But if you look at it, it looks like they actually have taken a layer of clear and put it over top. It could simply just be my eyes playing tricks on me, but if you look at it right around the bottom seam, it definitely seems like it's a separate piece that they've added over top of it. That definitely does give a little extra depth to the helmet, and I really like that they did that. Of course, going back again to those carbon accents all done in black, you've got the symbols there on either side. It's actually on both sides of his shoulders. And some additional black. Now, all the black that's making up his costume seems to be of the matte variety. It does not seem to be much of, in the way of a semi-sheen or a very shiny black. Even like the boots themselves are very much kept to more matte colors. Really liking the way that this one turned out. Where it is shiny seems to be only in the places of the white, but the places of the black don't, they break it up, but they don't compete with it, keeping more to that, that vein of that matte color black. And again, I think that works really well when you've got it with shiny white finish. Now, of course, the main talking point, of course, when it comes to the Executioner Trooper is the very large laser axe that it sports. You can see it's got some real fantastic detailing, not only on the handle that he's holding with both hands gripped tight, but as you can see on the very end of it, some real wondrous details that they've added in there, airbrushing some much needed additional purple. So again, it's not just black, silver, and white. I do really like that they've added that airbrushing. It really does enhance the detailing that they've done to this. Now, granted in the movie, this would be fully opened up and sporting connecting points from the top to the bottom would little be beams of, of literally laser beams that he would be using to carve into things. Now, this obviously is the more retracted variety. I would love to see maybe this guy get a release again with the ax actually be something that could open up and then have those little energy beams in between. They technically could have also given us an option where this top piece of the ax could have been removable, and then they could have just popped the secondary piece on that would have had the energy blades. Now, the only downside to it, being that this is comprised of what feels almost more like a resin, is that I, I would worry that if this was something that was opened up and you had the little beams of laser connecting the two, those would definitely be fragile elements and very susceptible then to breaking. As I feel, I really spent a lot of time looking at the front of the statue. I really want to spin this guy around so you guys can see all the details on the back. 
Again, you get afforded those additional black accents here. The tank located on the back has all been painted in nice black shiny. In fact, actually, it's a slightly more shinier black than makes up the rest of his armor. He's got a couple of little packs there located on the side, a pocket there on the one side of his belt. And again, continuing it all the way down, you have a real finished overall piece. The only thing that seems slightly discolored is the side section here, which I guess would be the holster for the energy axe. And that would just fit onto the side right here. When the laser axe is not in use, of course, I'm sure it would fold right back up and find its way attached to the side holster. Currently, as it serves right now, it doesn't really do much of a purpose, but it does seem to have a slightly off color to the rest of his armor. Where the armor seems generally quite bright, pristine, and white, it seems like the only place that doesn't have that is actually the holster. And I guess you could say, if this is a section that gets used frequently, then yes, it would make some sense that there would be a slight discoloration on it, that it wouldn't be as bright of a white as, say, the rest of his suit here. Now, to get the Executioner Trooper onto his display base, all you're going to want to do is guide these two metal pegs on the bottom of his only one foot, and you will want to line those up and fit them into the holes. Now, I did notice when I was putting this into the stand, let me just get this guy down here for a second, you will not want to just put him down immediately. As with most statues, I've seen the case where as you're putting them down, you sort of want to rock the statue slightly so you can get those posts lined up and fit into those holes. And again, when you get everything finished and set up, you have yourself one fantastic looking one six scale statue of the First Order Executioner. Again, bringing in the trading card, I'm not sure why specifically they changed things up. As you can again see that on the trading card, he's facing forward. I'm not doing anything different. I'm not putting him down in a different configuration because there's only one way to put him down on the display base. But for one reason or another, they decided to slightly twist him. It's a matter of preference more so than anything else. I think I kind of like him slightly twisted. The only downside, though, is if I do want to have him facing forward, like he's depicted here on the front of the card, I'm literally going to have to take the statue base and twist it slightly so that he's looking more like his trading card counterpart. Execution Stormtroopers are one of those Disney-created characters for their newest trilogy. It seems a bit extreme when you think about it that Mickey Mouse would come up with the idea of giving duties to a stormtrooper that his sole job is going around executing people with a laser axe. It's a bit strange. Now, granted, I'm comparing this to the original stormtroopers that barely shot anything and half the time were defeated by rocks from Ewoks. So yes, we're going from one extreme to the other. Stormtroopers that couldn't do anything in the original trilogy to now stormtroopers that are executing people bit extreme. Although I have to say, in the movie, it was pretty neat to see this guy wielding around a laser axe. Now, based on course on the design from the movie, Gentle Giant and Diamond Select, respectively, have come up with a really nice looking statue. The neat thing about this one is being that it's a one six scale full sized statue. It goes really well with six scale figures. If you're a big fan of collecting Star Wars six scale figures, ideally, this one looks great with it. It does have some nice details, especially the fact that he's wielding the laser axe. Not opened up, mind you, but I feel like if you had an opened up laser axe specifically for a statue, that would be definitely the one thing that would break. Could they have done it? Possibly. But then again, you would have the risk of maybe they could have had a swappable head. Take the one off that currently we're looking at right now and replace it in with a fully extended laser axe. But again, that problem with that little beam most definitely, that would be something that would break, I'm sure, on the statue. Instead, what we do get is the retracted variety, and it still does look good wielded in his hand. I do like the carbon finish added to his shoulders and that strip that's located on the side of his helmet. So it does do a nice job of breaking up that ridiculous design of the First Order Stormtrooper. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Stormtroopers from First Order, I still think they look like a whole bunch of ducks running around. Armored ducks. At least this one looks less like a duck because it does have the striping on his head. It does have the additional black around the face. And it does have it on the shoulders as well. Nice touch, by the way, for a gentle giant to incorporate what looked almost like a clear visor that they put over top of the black eyes. Really like the way that this one turned out. If you are a big fan of Star Wars, you definitely will want to be adding this one to your collection. But like I said, it is of a very limited quantity, with only 1,000 copies worldwide. Getting this guy in hand may be a little bit more difficult, but you may want to check around your local comic book stores and online to see if you can add this one to your personal collection. 
A big thank you again to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample of the Executioner Trooper. His career is going around executing people. Although, from the sound of it, it doesn't seem like it's always the same guy. Maybe he needs to take a bit of a holiday, and then they give Gary the job of being the executing stormtrooper. His He doesn't do as well of a job as Frank does. But either way, though, let me know what you guys think down below of the Star Wars Last Jedi Executioner Trooper Six scale statue. That's a bit of a mouthful. Also, if you're new to the channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, consider then the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turning the bell notification on, and coming back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when new videos will be coming to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Gonna have a whole bunch of statue reviews lined up and coming your way. So, as always, keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.